What's up, my friends? How y'all doing? This is your boy, So Sponge. Today, we're going to be going over the 28 planet thing that happened in Dragon Ball Super. I know this is an old subject, but I'm covering it because I on my old channel I did, and it got a lot of views, got a lot of good feedback. But I have this new channel now, and the old one's deleted, so I'm going to be covering this just so I can spread the info out to y'all, just in case any people were still interested or confused about this. We can bring a little bit more solidity to the Dragon Ball Super fan network and the episodes itself and the story itself because a lot of haters are always trying to you know pick it apart and everything like that and a lot of people think that this was just some sort of bs thing to be able to fit in a bunch of characters you know that they were familiar with within the power of tournament arc because that's when actually this line happened and he, people even like geekdom much respect to geekdom he is great he is the man whenever it comes to dragon ball z info but even he didn't know what to make about this he was pretty much on the same page reaction of everybody that was always saying stuff like this which was usually swiftly followed by this. That's just lazy writing. But that is actually not true at all, and we're going to be covering the reasons as to why. So we're going to go over the clip real quick, just for full context. All right, now that we got the full context, we're going to be going over the evidence from least to the greatest convincing ones, all right? Now, it's not going to be a long video, but I do want to increase the watch time just a little bit. I fully admit it, but hopefully I'll stick around for it because it's helped supporting the channel and it gives you all more info to be able to work with. First part of evidence is cooler. Yes, I know he's not a canon. Don't freak out in the comments. Don't start screaming at your screens or press the dislike button or anything. This is just a little extra cherry on top. Just an extra cherry on top. The little frosting around the cake. That's all this is to be able to have every little bit of info that we can. Even though it's non-canon, we do uh, establish the thought processes between Tio and uh, Toriyama and everyone else doing this but so we can get a better, more clear, definitive answer. All right, Cooler owned 256 planets while Frieza owned 79 planets. And that's not a lot compared to the grand scheme of the universe but if you it's just part of it it's part of it part of the reason is he probably took over really really good planets which means it probably had really habitable life on there which means that that is part of the equation right that's something we have to factor in and if you actually take over the planet unless you have family or something like that you really don't have anyone living at your home so likely for Frieza and how stuck up cooler is and everything like that they're not going to have anyone living on their planet either it's just going to be kind of like you know Bernie's and Bernie Sanders' third home, you know, they have it air conditioning running. No one's living there. No one's doing anything with it. That's just the house that they end up needing right there. So that's probably what's going on with Cooler and Frieza. And plus, later on in the non canon movie, I fully admit, non canon movie, Cooler actually talks about how he is destroying planets, how he has to do seven that day. If you take that as a solar system, he's basically wiping out the solar system per day on average because he, he makes it in context, that statement, uh, as if that's what he has scheduled to do all the time. He can't get behind schedule. And that's a lot of planets throughout the day. Now, now that's not that many in the grand scheme in the universe, but it adds up over time, especially if you have multiple, multiple members of the family doing it. That definitely adds up. Probably not that big in the grand scheme, but definitely maybe even for our galaxy. Yeah, especially with how much more powerful Frieza gets and everything like that. Definitely a little factor to consider right there. Someone is escaping. Frieza's the one in charge of this quadrant. Let him clean up his own mess. I've got seven planets to destroy by the end of the day. Why should I allow myself to get behind schedule just to cover his mistake? No. Then we have the factor of Boo with Bobby going around and destroying galaxies. Yes, not just planets, like it says in the English dub manga, which is just BS. I don't know how they messed up this translation, but it actually was galaxies shown on the screen. And if you actually look in the Japanese manga, thank you very much, Seth the Programmer, for pointing this out, that there actually is the connotation in the Japanese symbol for uh, solar systems and stars, then that actually translates to a ton of planets, galaxies over time. Uh, and uh, he obviously lapped out, wiped out a lot of life. So that's a huge amount of planets with sentient life that he was obviously chasing because Bobbity wasn't just after the destruction of the universe. He specifically wanted to be able to wreak havoc on planets with abundant life on them because he was just that evil. He was just that sinister. So he wanted to spread pain and misery and death wherever he went. So he would obviously choose planets with highly functioning sentient life. So that's what they were specifically targeting 
they wiped out galaxies worth of those, that definitely factors in a lot. We don't know exactly how many galaxies, but we can assume that it is a lot because Boo has lived within time immemorial and Bobbity is like freakishly old like eons and eons so they probably did a lot of damage over time now wipe out a lot of life that which will factor into the mortal ranking and supreme cause statement was stated to destroy stars in the original japanese manga like there's the you know the symbol for stars and planets and it wasn't just planets so he was destroying stars and planets and here's another thing is that boo is destroying galaxies over time right over time hundreds of worlds empty and inhabited alike were reduced to rubble entire galaxies were erased from existence no one could withstand the full force of his malevolence but the main one right here, but the greatest evidence here of all is the Beerus and Goku fight, all right? Now, you always hear about these cancerous lowballers and Superman slash comic fanboys. Oh, well, we didn't see the whole universe being destroyed and all of this content, so it doesn't really count. We don't know how much was actually destroyed, blah, 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 blah. Oh, it's so infuriating. They actually expect you to actually not believe what the narrator says Toriyama confirmed and what the show obviously is implicates because that's dbz style but they want you to show every single thing the trillions billions quadrillions quintillions worth of stuff in the universe we have to show it all gone in order to be able to appease their fanboyish hating dbz hating ways i like it's just so so stupid it was done the way it was done and that's more than good enough to have shown feats finally on the screen because we never got that before super or battle of gods or anything came out right it shows a supernova an asteroid belt a planets planets multiple planets all being destroyed all right what this 28 planets thing is actually confirmation of is confirmation of how much they actually destroyed yes we have the boo part and you know the cooler and Frieza and all that other but that's still that's still the peanuts that's still very minuscule compared to the rest of the universe but the power that the gods now have between beers and goku it actually shows that a lot of the sentient life was actually destroyed unfortunately and that's one of the, another reason why it has such a low motor ranking is because beers just doesn't care about the universe or what happens to it so that he that's why he was second on the list right there second worst all right that's actually proof of the sentient life that was toriyama giving us a low baller defeat right there that was him giving us something to be able to kill the dbz haters and the fam superman fanboys with all right that was what he was doing and yes he has a history of doing this where people are like oh he doesn't watch this show he doesn't care about that bs i can list several examples several examples but we're just going to go over two because i can't possibly name all the ways that he does it i have plenty of videos that i will link at the end of the video that have the little those little tabs at the end and with the little broly uh, scene that i'm going to be putting at the end of video two where you can click on those like him surviving uh, say in surviving space there's lots of evidence that they have done that and no tori tara messed it up and he doesn't stay con in the continuity with toriyama's work and all unfortunately he has a good drawer and tells some good stories but man he really messed that space part up so that's a perfect example of how fast they can go and the confusion around that whether vegeta died or not there he's always learning this little bonus stuff for example like Oh, well, you know, Superman has infinite strength, even though they use feats that actually don't support that at all and debunk it within their own scans, oftentimes, because they don't do nothing but Google scans and listen to screw attack for God knows what reason anymore. <laughs> but uh, here's a perfect example. You actually get four defeats in beyond infinite strength, you know, Jiren and Goku Ultra Instinct affecting infinite amounts of strength and getting stronger only at that point. That's a bonus that he gives us. Oh, you remember whenever, uh, you know, Goku was actually making a mock scene toriyama put him in a joke scene oh well i'm not sure if i can survive the earth's core down there and they put him in a little space suit but what do they do later on since everyone was actually complaining about that and the haters are using that as evidence that you know they really weren't that strong and could even have planetary durability what does he do he puts a goku and broly in the movie in a bad you know butt movie we'll kind of watch out for the youtube overlords and they actually show him in lava for an extended period of time fighting with broly this is all fan service to be able to kill the dbz haters and the superman phone boys i guarantee you that he has heard about how bad screw attack is and has it out for that i guarantee you. maybe i'm fanboying out there just a little bit specifically on that part but this is all fan service he listens to the fans and he gives us what we want all right so that's all he was doing right there that is actually a fan service thing the 28 plants confirmed 
confirms the destruction capabilities of Goku at Super Saiyan Red and Beerus, and they've only gotten stronger since then, and that was him confirming it for us once again, so we can continue to use this. You can use this video in, you know, scaling debates, or, you know, uh, against, you know, DBZ haters, or comic fanboys, or you're doing death battles, you know, in your Facebook groups, or whatever. You can use this video. It's a nice little short video, so you can just slam it on right there. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Let me know if you think I messed any missed anything in the comments, or if I messed anything up. Even if you disagree, we can have a nice, calm, reasonable discussion. You don't have to bomb the dislike button to hell or anything like that. Just let me know, and maybe I can change my If I'm wrong and I didn't realize something, I'm more than willing to hear it out. But I haven't seen anyone else come up with anything good or cover this kind of subject. So hopefully y'all enjoyed this video. Puts a nice little uh, finish, fine finish on the Dragon Ball Super Series. Please subscribe and hit that bell for notifications and select the all feature if you haven't already. And when you share this video around, share it around everywhere. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, anybody who's interested in DBZ, share it around because that's what helps the channel mainly grow because the YouTube algorithm is all sorts of messed up. So make sure that other people see these kind of things and tell them to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications and select the all feature so you can see all my future content whenever you share this video around as well. I would really appreciate it. And follow me on all my social media platforms where we do more debates like Facebook. At Facebook, I do tons of debates on there. So that's the main one. Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. Links will be in the description along with all the videos that you should definitely check out. A lot more uh, better in-depth DBZ content where I debunk a lot of the haters and everything like that. I'm really proud of those videos. So hopefully y'all will check those out. And that's just about it. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for listening. Here's the little Broly clip. And to be able to top it off, a nice little cherry on top whenever you get to see these videos, get to have a little nostalgia with the new Broly movie uh, one of the best scenes right here and I always do that for the end of my videos I always usually give you some sort of comedy or some sort of extra bit to be able to uh, finish the movie off with a nice little taste in your mouth so I will see y'all later peace out my friend Oh! <sighs>